Hello, welcome to my video, and I'm here today to cheese every single boss in this game. And I decided this was a nice excuse to play as Wes, because why not? So let's talk about the rules for this run, there are 4 of them. The most important rule is I have to cheese all bosses. I can only not cheese a boss if that boss has already been cheesed before. This run, I have to figure out how to cheese every single boss, even those that are not worth doing so. I could kill every single boss with gunpowder, but that would not be interesting. So rule number 2 is to avoid using the same cheese methods. Unfortunately, there's a limited number of cheeses, so it's unavoidable to repeat a few things. So this rule basically means I can't gunpowder everything, or raise a bunnyman army and use them for every boss. The third rule for this run is that I can do whatever I want. There are no limits. If it's implemented in the game, unintended mechanic or bug, I'm allowed to do it. But this is a legit run, so no spawning or going to island through console commands, and no server mods that changes the game. And the last rule, I have to be was to defeat bosses. As mentioned, I'm allowed to use every tool this game provides, that includes character swapping. But to make this a West run and not a character swapping for everything run, I have to acquire all the necessary items and kill all bosses as Wes. And finally, before we start, this run was streamed on Twitch. That's why there's an overlay on the top left corner of the screen. I would like to just take a few seconds to thank all my Twitch supporters. A lot of the cheese ideas came from chat, and this run would not be possible if it wasn't for the amazing people helping me out. Also, the footage is old, like 2 months old. Yes, I've been very very lazy on editing this video. The first goal of this run is to successfully rush the ruins. For the most part, I've been walking around with a speedy balloon on my hand. You explore surprisingly fast with it, and you just pick up flowers to restore the sanity loss for making so many balloons a day. The goal for the first few days was to get an alchemy engine and to make all the necessary items for the ruins. But one thing that is worth mentioning is that I went out of my way to craft a miner hat. I want to keep using the speedy balloon in the caves, so I need a light source on my hand to keep using the balloon on my hand. This makes everything a little bit more dangerous, since I can get one shot by a death swarm. But I get to explore faster, so it's worth the risk. My goal is to kill Ancient Guardian, it drops amazing loot and is the quickest way to get everything I need. But the good old pillar cheese no longer works, so how am I cheesing AG? Well, there's this one forgotten creature that only spawns in the caves, the Rock Lobster. They can be befriended for a few minutes if you give them some tasty rocks, and they're actually really strong, as you will see. But I had to find Ancient Guardian first, since Rock Lobsters will only follow me for about a couple of days before requiring more rocks. So it's better to know Edge's location before I befriend the lobsters to go directly to the boss fights without losing any soldiers. Unfortunately for Waz and his 75 max sanity, it doesn't take long for him to become insane in the caves. And every speedy balloon costing 5 sanity doesn't help with that. So a good portion of my time was wasted killing nightmare creatures. And let's not forget Waz deals 25% less damage, so fighting those creatures takes a lot longer. And after many days of fighting nightmare creatures and collecting rocks, it is time to defeat Ancient Guardian and to collect our precious loot. After that total west moment, I cleared some of the ruins, almost died several times, crafted a lot of good stuff and made my way back on the surface to prep for winter. I 
I found this cool farce app Sadby, so I thought it would be a good idea to use it to distract MacTusk so I can deal easily with the hounds. It was messy, but it kinda worked. As was, I was actually scared to face MacTusks. 75 health is the one big downside of this character. Your health just disappears too fast, especially against more than one enemy. With other characters, I usually end up relying on tanking a couple of hits, but Wes can't do that. But on the first kill, I got one tusk and one tam. Second kill, another tusk and another tam. I'm totally done with Mac Tusk for this run. And I have decided it is time to kill Claws. But how am I cheesing this guy? Well, there's this old method I found through Don Johnny's videos that I wanted to try. The concept is quite simple. Position the end table by claw stash so he can't reach you. You can move the end table at night by holding a torch. Positioning it correctly can be kind annoying, but it honestly pays off. The tricky part is to separate claws and the deers, which I used walls and signs to do so. The AI is not really able to understand signs are on their way, so they just keep trying to walk over it to reach claws. While this is a much easier fight with no magic attacks from the deers, I still have to dodge all melee attacks. Claws is a big boy that hits really hard with his double swipe, so tanking is not really an option. Even though I'm choosing it as once, this still takes forever. But this will be worth it because I'll get good loot, right? No, the loot was terrible. But they 30 is here, let's cheese Deer Clops. Yeah, I'm not messing with Feast Clops, too dangerous for Wes. Before actually killing Deer Clops, I have decided to put her to work on this bee biome. Her attack is pretty good to destroy hives and kill bees. Doing this generates me a good amount of food that takes a long time to spoil. If you have a lot of reeds, you can also do this to make a bunch of honey poultices, a great item for healing. But it takes some time and patience. Especially because it's winter and you have to heat your thermal stone frequently. I spent around 25 minutes on this and she only cleared about 30% of the bee field. Not really efficient, but kind of fun if you ask me. Since there's a spider quarry nearby, that's another really good use for her AoE. But I didn't spend much time on this one, I'll not need that much silk, so I just destroyed a few dents and moved on. And to finally actually cheese her, the good old Leta Tentacle do the job. And this concludes the first winter. Ring is here and I focus mostly on exploration, getting resources and farming for food. I explored the sea to find the lunar island and took a few stone fruit bushes and anemones from it. The anemones are great for an automatic vote goat farm and stone fruits are easy, stackable food. I've decided to start working on Bee Queen and to rely on the good old bunny man method. At this point of the run, defeating Bequee results in a massive quality of life improvement since I'll be able to have good food on me at all times through bundle wraps. In case you're new to this game, items inside of a bundle wrap don't spoil. Whenever you need food, you unbundle it, get what you need and bundle the remaining food back in. That way your food never goes to waste due to spoilage. I chose bunny men for this method because they are easy to set up and I can repeat this fight as many times as I want in the future. Right? No, not really. Even though I increased the amount of bunny houses in the war generation settings, I got almost no bunny hutches, not even half of how many I need. And farming for bunny buffs is far from being reliable, since it's a 25% drop rate, so that was put in hold for the moment. Summer is here, time to fish for desert goggles. First package, easy. And just moments later, I got the Lord of the Fruit Flies, which is not a boss, so no need to cheese. And later on summer, I decided to finally assemble the marble pieces. 
The goal is to break the assembled marble pieces on a full moon, so they will turn into simple clockworks, and not the shadow pieces bosses. This is just an easy way to obtain the sketches without having to fight the boss. With the sketches, you can perform the actual boss fights anywhere you want, which will be important for my cheese strategy. Since the set piece is close to the moon altar, I also got the moon caller shortly after. Day 75, Badger is here, time to lure him across the map. There's no rush on killing Badger, you can leave him away from your base and he'll never bother you. I didn't know how many logs I would need throughout the run, so killing the best lumberjack in the game could be a disadvantage. Day 77, I decided to work on the actual Shadow Pieces fights. Sadly, this method was fixed with the Monkey Island updates, but I'll leave a very similar alternative in the description. But what I am doing here is placing as many knight statues on the boats as possible. I'll be fighting bishop and rook on land and the knights will be stuck on the boats. And another west moment happens. Day 81, the knights of the shadow pieces fight. I got another lord of the fruit flies. Exactly 25 days later. Now let me explain this very awkward shadow pieces fight. As mentioned, I will be taking the first two pieces. Once you kill one shadow piece, the other ones near it will level up. So once the bishop was killed, the rook and all of the knights on the boats also leveled up. And by killing the rook, all the knights will be stuck in the boats at max level. This is extremely dangerous because the knight has an absurd attack range, and so many of them can instantly kill any character. What I'm trying to do here is to place all knights in the correct position so they are at the edge of the boat slash coast. By placing them correctly and by destroying the boats, the game forgets the knights are actually walking on water, and they drown. I'm sad to see this method go, but I think you can see why it had to. Every knight kill drops a heart, a dark sword, and a knight armor. Super OP. After getting a small amount of bunny man hutches in the caves, I had to make a decision about B Queen. Either change the cheese or go in the crazy and overly expensive routes. And of course I ended up choosing the crazy over the expensive routes. Every time you place a bunnyman hutch, it will instantly spawn one bunnyman on it. And that's what I've done. I destroyed all the houses, rebuilt them, destroyed them again until I got more than 30 bunnymen. I also used the construction amulets I had for cheaper houses. This means I only have one try with the bunnyman method. So I gave them some football helmets for extra defense, fed them good food since it would be their last and it's time for the bee queen cheese. Bunnyman will destroy bee queen on the first two phases but the third and the fourth ones are a huge problem. When bee queen screeches the bunnyman go wild so I'm forced to do something to re-aggro them on her. If you don't do that most of them will focus on the grumble bees which will get them killed. Fun fact, Wes gets extra efficiency on every tool and weapon he uses, which means less durability is consumed on pretty much everything. That includes ice saves. And that's what I use to re aggro the bunnyman. Wes moments right at the end, totally crazy and not able to re-aggro the bunnyman. But finally, at day 95, Bee Queen has been successfully cheesed. And by the end of the second winter, I decided to complete Pearl's tasks. The only task I was missing to get the pearl was planting butterflies, which I had to wait for spring to complete. At day 114, I completed the archives puzzle to get the astro detector. Shortly after, I found the celestial pieces. And with all the prep done, it is time to cheese Crap King. This is my favorite cheese of the run and I've been using this method in my normal playthroughs as well. We can all agree that Crab King is the worst boss to solo in this game and I honestly don't feel bad about cheesing him at all. 
This method consists in using bees to kill Crab King. Put 40 killer bees in a bundle or gift wrap. You can use normal bees before having these fights in spring. Set it on fire and start the fights. Make sure to spread the bees in groups of 10 inside of the bundle. I don't know why it matters, but it does. Once the bundle is destroyed by the fire, the bees will pop out of it to attack whatever is close to them. And all you do now is roll around Crab King. If you are at the correct distance, Crab King won't cast freezing attacks, only the geyser attacks. You can bring a star color like I did, just in case Crab King ends up freezing the bees. On that case, you can just cast a couple of stars on the frozen bees so they will be unfrozen. But you need to be really careful after the fights. Crab King might be dead, but you still have to deal with the bees. It's late, but I have decided to kill Moose Goose for the first time. For this one, I decided to fight fire with fire. Two bosses to kill one. The twins are surprisingly handy for this, since you can spawn them literally anywhere you want. It can be tricky to make the two bosses target each other, but when they do, the twins will destroy whatever enemy is in their path. I enjoy that cheese very much, so I decided to try again, but it doesn't seem to be super consistent. I had to finish the fight myself this time. Keep in mind that if you spawn the twins once, one night without spawning them again makes the terrarium empty, meaning you have to wait 15 days until the spawner recharges. Second summer, it is time to kill Ant Lion. This is why I'm not using gunpowder for every boss. Just this one. My plan now is to kill the ancient fuel weaver. I could have used a couple of lure plants and a houndios to cheese it, but I'm saving the houndios for something else, so I have decided to use the most fair and balanced game mechanic. Character swapping. You play as one of the cheesiest survivors, Winona. Winona's entire play style is around cheesing everything with her catapults. And the cool part is that you don't have to be Winona to use them. Anyone can use it, she only has to build them. So she totally deserves an appearance in this run. And don't worry, this is just a crossover episode where the new character shows up to help our beloved hero. Wes is still gonna be the one saving the day. And I'm gonna do something totally valid, called Void Walking. You can push yourself with a door to walk over the void and easily find the atrium. This is a cheese run, so of course we are cheesing even the void itself. Once you reach the destination type, slash rescue, to go back on land. So I built the catapults around the arena. Then I swapped back to Wes, got everything I needed and went to find Fuel Weaver. Except that I forgot a lazy explorer. This might be cheesy, but it's not a free fight. It's still dangerous and I'm still Wes, not taking any chances. So I went back to my base to grab it and quickly ran back to the atrium. So let's get to the fights. The catapults not only deal a ton of extra damage, they also get rid of the wovens on the second phase. But I still have to keep you weaver aggro only, to avoid the catapults destruction. And it's kinda funny how two telepoofs and I'm pretty much completely insane. But it was a pretty smooth fight. After Phil Weaver, I decided to assemble the celestial pieces. And I realized that I didn't get Crab King's piece and he respawned on top of it. Initially, I thought I couldn't get it and I would have to fight it again. The worst fight of the game, again. So I even started collecting another 40 bees for another fight. And to cheer me up, I decided to cheese Toadsu. 
I'm a big fan of this cheese as well. I've been using it on a lot of my runs and it's fairly easy to set up. The first step of the cheese is to lure it as far from the spawner as possible. The second step is to either put it to sleep or freeze it so you can push it even further away. The fastest way to push it is to place a fossil underneath it which instantly breaks while pushing him a step away. Keep pushing him further and further and place two lure plants to block him from walking back to spawner. You should do this during winter since it's the only time of the year when lure plants don't spawn ice. After everything is set, all you have to worry about is destroying trees and dealing damage until it's dead. To deal extra damage, I placed a few bee mines really close to toads too. It instantly triggers them and they deal a ton of damage over time. As well, since trees takes more hits to be chopped and I have lower DPS, I actually need the bees to deal damage for me. Even though it's a cheese, this still takes forever. Actually feels like I'm killing misery toads too. And by the way, this method works for the Misery version as well. This run was not completely thought out when I first started it and a few things were figured along the way. And I wasn't sure how to kill the twins but someone suggested that I could use Enraged Claws to deal with them. Unfortunately, when I transferred the save file from the beta to the main branch, the game just decided to delete my claw stash of the winter. So I had to turn on Winter's Feast and wait until the next sack spawns, which was during spring. I'm explaining this because the idea was pretty decent, but on spring the nights keep getting shorter and shorter. The twins were not able to kill the deers before the end of the nights, and there was a limited amount of antlers I could use to summon claws while summoning the twins every night. By the way, I can't really kill the deers myself to make claws enrage because I'm west and it will 100% kill me with a double swipe. So this cheese actually kinda worked in the end but I just don't recommend it because it just took way too long. Well, it worked but I had to finish Retinator myself. I was completely ready to kill Crab King again, but I decided to try to retrieve the altar one more time. Turns out, if you place the pinching winch at the very corner of your boat, you can actually retrieve it. I couldn't be happier. Time for the Moonstorms. With Moonstorms active, every night is considered a full moon night, so I decided to get another moon color staff. It's about to be summer and this will be pretty useful. With a day left on spring, I quickly work in a few big houses, I'll explain this a bit later. And there's not a lot to talk about when it comes to Wagstaff's minigame. With night armors, I'm pretty safe and the birds are still killed in one hit, so it's not like there's any extra challenge to do this as well. I had to make a quick trip to the ruins so I decided to kill Ancient Guardian again. Since it was successfully cheesed once, I can just kill it normally. But this fight was an actual nightmare. It takes so long as well that I ended up insane several times. Not only that, I also started starving mid-fight. So yeah, at least here I got to experience the real West gameplay. Now moving on to Celestial Champion. The reason I went to the ruins was to make Houndia shoot use, which I will use to cheese this boss. This cheese used to work amazingly before the AI updates and now it still works but it's just terrible. I have to keep luring it to the right spot because it just doesn't aggro on the turrets. And for the second phase... Believe it or not, it was the first death of the run. I was just not expecting those castles to reach me and I also didn't know they did so much damage. And that's why you should always carry a life-giving amulet. That happened because Lasso Champion was targeting me and not the turrets. Once I positioned myself a little further back, it didn't attack anymore. And on the third phase, Lasso Champion actually targeted the turrets, destroying them very very easily. Considering that I died and that if I had placed the turrets a little further back, it could have worked. I could have rolled back to try again. According to my rules, a rollback would be allowed, since it's a mechanic built in the game. And I was expecting to use it a few times when I first had the idea for this run, but there wasn't a single moment until now that I even considered using it and I didn't want to resort to it after 200 days, so I decided to just deal with the consequences. I blew up a few gunpowder I had stored and just spammed every single weather pane I had. I could have fought it normally but cheesing two phases is not enough. 
I need to cheese all phases for this to be considered a success. So after using every single thing I could to deal as much damage as possible, with 1k health left, I finished the fight myself. For the remaining fights of this run, I decided to do another super cheesy character swap. Time for some Volt Gold Jelly. I tried farming for peppers, but I just got extremely unlucky and never got a single one. So no spicy jelly this time. And as many people do, I used Warly for the jelly and swapped out immediately. And now let's finally cheese Dragonfly. As you can see, I'll be using Pigment for this fight. Besides their help, I'll be eating a Volt Gold Jelly for the extra damage from the electricity it provides. And on top of that, I'll be throwing water balloons on her to make her wet, which causes the electricity to deal even more damage. This all combined results in an actual insane amount of damage, and the fights went way easier than I was expecting. Shortly after, I decided to let Berger knock down a few trees, so it spawns a few tree guards and I just watched the show. And I let the two eyeballs fight. But Deerclops was way too slow, so I decided to finish the fight with Beefaloos. Which leads us to the final boss of the run, Malbatross. And I had the dumbest idea for this fight. Originally, I thought about spamming Weather Paint on Malatros until it's dead, but they were used to finish the Lesser Champion. There isn't a lot of alternatives to cheese Malatros, so I decided to bring a bunch of Beefaloos with me on a boat. But as I was placing them on a boat one by one, they started to glitch out of the boats and walking over the ocean. Kind of unfortunate that I can't really retrieve the ones walking on water, but I still managed to get a bunch of them on a the boat. Anyway, you all know how fun it is to spawn Malatros, right? Oh my god, no way, first try! The Beefaloos totally helped. We even had a teenage one to give moral support. JK, they died super fast. As I said, the dumbest idea ever. This fight was just a complete mess, a total West moment. I'm insane, Mawatros refusing to aggro on me, boat is sinking, everything that could have went wrong, went wrong. But with Dark Swords and Volt Go Jelly, I'm actually dealing a decent amount of damage, so it was not necessarily a hard fight. And this brings us to the end. But wait, there's one more cheese that I can perform, and I'll break my own rules to perform it. The cheesiest way to play this game, playing a no P character. And of course, let's destroy the easiest of all bosses, some don't even consider this one to be a boss. Let's cheese Spider Queen. 